let's see how far this guy goes. This guy goes to like right there to where that bolt is, basically. I would say to like right here. You know, your pistol may need to be a little bit longer. It, it may take some time for you to get those proportions right. Um, I'm gonna pull you back just a little bit more. And let's start working on that first curve. So I'm just going to extrude you out this way here, like this, and let's put like, a, I don't know, like three edge loops maybe. Could have done like a three-faced, you know, extrusion there, whatever. Okay, so what I want to do now See if I can rig up a soft select bend. We'll see if this works. Um, you know what? You know what's nice is it's nice to have like a reference shape, okay? And this is what I call a reference shape. It's it's really just you grabbing a cylinder or grabbing, you know, whatever shape you're using and just using it as, as a reference. Just, you know, how how big do I want my bend to be? Like, uh, how intense does it need to be? Like, how big of an angle am I working with here? This is like a great tool to use. You know, I, I want this thing to bend and make like a portion turn. So something like this right here. There's a little bit of that. And you know what's nice about this is you can have it set up. And if you do it the right way, you can use that shape to snap some pivots to things. So you'll see here. I can grab this and move my pivot over to a vertice here to that middle point and now as I rotate I know it's going to wrap around that pivot you kind of see what's happening there I wish it was a little bit more responsive it's a little strange kind of want this thing to be, well, it's not going to be entirely flat, though. I don't want to lose any scale on this thing. If I do any stuff like this, then it may seem like I'm losing a little bit of scale on that. And if I, like, going to require some pondering. Yeah, maybe I need to Let's see if I if I can pull this guy out a little bit more on that pivot. Yeah, that does kind of help things. So just like keep moving that pivot around and maybe that'll handle things a little bit better now. Now I'm getting some wonkier shapes though. Okay. Yeah, I don't I don't want that much of a bend though. Just kind of play with it. Alright. I think that gets the job done there. Something like that.
it's a good way to kind of just snap things in place um, or just kind of have some reference there for you to work with I kind of pull in and kind of manipulate it manually now I guess but you know I generally you generally you don't want to do a lot of this kind of stuff because it is kind of changing the proportions up a little bit I think that gets the job done something like that and then I could just delete this shape here. I wish it didn't grab my vertices there. I probably, you know, if I had duplicated this model, let's uh, let's reset my pivot here. If I had duplicated that model though, that would have been a little bit better for me. See if I can snap my guys in place here now. Just hold the V key and just hit that snap. I'll probably once again I'm still gonna be mirroring. So I'm not really gonna worry about the other side either. Where are you trying to go? Okay, that should align things up. I am just, I'm going to leave this kind of stuff here to, uh, for after. Since I'm doing all these manipulators right now, I don't want to worry about things getting too messy on me here. Snap in place, bro. There we go. Okay, so we got that little extrusion there that's happening. And now I can kind of treat this whole shape as another extrusion here, right? Kind of work with that. Now our uh, pistol. Oof, yeah, we're not even, we shouldn't even be close to that yet. Once again, you know, this this thing is probably going to have to change the proportions once we get around to it. I feel like the barrel is probably going to need to get longer. We'll work with something. That's okay. It's a closed zipper, so that's good. So you don't have to model the whole interior of that zipper mechanism. All you really need is just what's visible on the outside. So just make sure you're following that, like the reference of that. Uh, you know, if you're if you're if we're working on this bag this month, then uh, make sure that you give me uh, reference shots and submit your stuff again in 1.2, so I can have your reference images there. Okay. So I. This is bothering me now, so I'm just gonna pull this guy over here because proportions. Yeah, we're we're sucking on proportions right now. Okay, and then we have this shape that's happening here. This is kind of a this is kind of an extended cylinder. This whole gun, though, that like this whole gun has these, you know, and I, I may be just a little bit too cylindrical with a lot of this, though, in all honesty. Um, let me do something here real quick, because on, on this over on this overall gun here, I'm going to say this, that like the curvature that we're rocking here is way too, it's way too curvy. It's too, it's too tall. I'll say that. So I'm going to try to just make that a little bit more shallow too. Just take it a little bit down, pull a little bit up there. You know, we don't want this thing looking too round. 
It's not a rod. That seems a little bit better too. That's giving us more volume in here to work with. Actually, I'm gonna pull you up just a little bit more there. I think that's what we should be rocking right there, something like that. But this this curvature stuff continues on. Like it, it has that curvy surface throughout the entire weapon pretty much. So, you know, I'm probably gonna have to set up for another one of those deformers to happen right there. And that's gonna be a hard thing to do. Um, you know, we can work with a Taurus probably to, to, to get a better bend out of this thing that's gonna go a little bit more shapely like that. I'm just not sure though. Let's try that extrusion again. Let's see what we got. Actually, yeah, let me... Before I do that extrusion, let's increase the divisions of that extrusion. Let's get like eight in there. That way when I do that extrusion, it's gonna evenly divide out those eight faces. Since I'm, since I'm working with so many of these curves, I should just keep a cylinder out here for those reference cylinders. You know what I mean? It's like I wanna get this kind of bend, but I don't wanna lose that roundness again, right? So, let's see here. I wanna be able to see what's happening, so I want my cylinder to still be thin. or I should say short, short cylinder. Um, let's go a little bit thinner with it. Once again, this is just letting me know what I'm working with here. Hopefully, you know, we do that soft select now, it's not really conflicting with a lot of stuff. I actually, I don't want like any influence on this shape I know that I want that to be like my straight stuff there. So hold my pivot over here again, snap it on that, that the middle of that cylinder. Okay. You know what, I think my brush just needs to change a little bit actually. Let's go to soft select and see, yeah, because I'm getting this kind of thing happening here and I don't really want that. I want like linear. That's what I want. Has that been my problem this whole time? Yep. <laughs> I had like a lump in my soft select. I can check yourself for lumps. <laughs> Damn. Heard that. <laughs> oh my goodness. The time I'm wasting here. Uh... Okay, but the the intensity of this is too much. Actually, here's what I need to do. I need to pull this guy in, because right now I just have too much length. Now, let's try that rotation out. I need like a 90 degree rotation. Here. fix this. What am I, what should I do here? That's not doing the right thing. I mean, I do, it does kind of do a little bit of this. I don't know, no. That's some crazy stuff.
My stole is too long. Let's try to change this again. Okay, I'm just gonna let's try to just tweak the the pivot here. You gotta play with this stuff, you know. No, now now it's going too wide though. That's okay. It takes try. It takes it, it takes time to learn these things, guys. If you want to, if you want to do it right, it's gonna take time to do these things. And uh, you have to, you kind of have to be like a mathematical wizard to understand like how you would want to do some of these things. Let me, let me. Uh, Pull up a little bit on that soft select, so I'm not really messing two things up too much up there. I mean, just eyeballing this stuff can work a little bit, so that's pretty much what I'm going to do. Yeah, I think that gets the job done. Good enough. Okay, now Mr. Cylinder. I'm not gonna delete you, I'm just gonna put you there. Okay, and then the rest of this surface is flat. We'll work on that bevel that that that's that chamfer there when we get to it. Um You know, I've already modeled this much with you too. It's like, you know, why would I why would I not go all the way with it now? Now, I've been trying to... I've been thinking about doing these kind of things. Um, my pivot's all messed up again still. Reset. Uh, so I'm going to take my edge, my edge loops this way. That seems like a good way to take them. Take these edge loops the other way. And make a little star junction there. So that's probably the approach that I want to take with this pistol. Just to get my stuff correct here. Merge these guys. Merge these guys together. Okay. Yeah, I realize it's not that thick, but I'm just kind of setting things up here. It's, uh... Okay, so we have this chamfer that's happening here. That is a tough one because it's so it's so big. But you know, we definitely need to work with some kind of sphere. Absolutely, it's going to be necessary. Whether we decide to like uh, boolean the shape in there. Or just work with the geometry is kind of up to up to the artist as well. Okay. If you can get your stuff to line up the right way, then that that's what that that's what makes all the difference there too. So let me try rotating. Here's what we want to do: is we want to get like our shape set up here. Um. Before we even manipulate it too much too, I, I, I'm just trying to like position it right now so that I know how big I want it. Like I want it to be kind of lined up like this. Pretty much right now I just want to say, I just want to see like how many edges do I want to use on this thing really. If you scale this thing up uniformly and you're not like going in one direction or the other, um, then it's not going to mess up with your transform options over here. So that's good. That's what I want. Um, now I'm going to lower my axes and height so I can get something that's close. Ooh, okay, so that's pretty good right there, I think. Something like that. Okay. 
Um, so let me pull that out and see what we're working with here. Now, I would say that this shape right here needs at least like three or four faces. Um, let's go for, let's just do a quarter of this thing for right now so I know what we're working with here. I'm gonna detach these components and only use that now. So, you know, I've, I've pretty much corrupted the sphere now, so I can't do any more edge work with it as far as determining some of those things. We can kind of start scaling things around here, though. Um, okay. Like, this scaling is fine. I could do that scaling, but this one is... What am I doing here? I'm in world. I'm not an object. Did that change? anything. No, it didn't. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold D and click on an edge. I want to be in object mode. Hold D and find this edge. And that'll orient my pivots quickly to where I want it to be. Now I can do a nice little subtle shape like that. Okay, it's kind of like a slice of uh, melon here. And like modeling this whole thing out was absolutely necessary to understand like where to even begin here because I don't know everything. I don't know how I'm going to approach everything until I get to it. So that's what's important is you guys have to do this organically and kind of Approach these things as they come around. All right, so now that we're kind of matching things together here, let's see what we're working with. Actually, what I can do to start this process off here. Let's do an edge loop over here in the middle. I'm not using it to smooth anything out. I'm just using it to attach things together. And then let's, let's just delete these faces. I know I spent forever, you know, modeling this thing out. Um, I would say you generally, in this case, I'm going to rely on the shape here. Um, I, I'm probably going to need another edge loop here, so I'm going to put that in there. Again, I don't really need it to morph too much. Some of these shapes are going to rely on that that loop there first, and the other ones are, are not. They're going to require, uh, you know, you have to figure out which one's more important. Is it the shape that I'm cutting out, or is it the shape that I'm cutting into? In some of these situations, it may be like, well, this shape is a little bit too intense, so I may not want that thing working like that, but you see what's happening here. Now, I'm, I'm like just now realizing that this thing is still pretty deep. <laughs> like, that's too deep for me, really. And thankfully, this thing is still pivoted in the middle a little bit. So let's just let's see if I can reduce that down to something usable here still. Okay. That works for me. 
Is this is this edge like something's not flat here? Let me train. Let me change this up and see if we have something here. Uh, where'd you go? Reset the pivot. There we go. I'm just gonna scale it flat because something something's not lining up here. Okay, now it looks like I'm flat again. I think these guys, it wasn't entirely flat, but now that it is flat, I'm gonna snap these guys back in place here. Something there happened. I hope this is flat. Hopes and dreams, that's what this, these models are made through from this, hopes and dreams. See what we're working with here now. I probably shouldn't be deleting anything. I mean, these faces, they're probably definitely going to get deleted. But you want to preserve as much as you can here. can snap this edge or this vertice to this it's fine I might even just delete this edge look because it seems pretty extreme or you know what I can do here I'm just gonna relax this edge loop out and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slide it around here I'm gonna do like one slide and then another slide and that's gonna kind of relax it out just a little bit. It's a nice little technique. Just to kind of tell it to cool the hell down. Because every time you do this operation, it produces a, a, a small deviation in that curve. That's not too bad. And then we're going to put that edge loop in there again. Now let's let's combine these guys together now so I can bridge some of this stuff here. Let's see if I could do a bridge here, huh? Snap these guys together probably. Merge in the center. Nope. Oh yeah, these guys are not merged either. That makes sense. There, that should close the gap and now I can just fill this hole in. The new shape there. I'm still not sure. I, I'm not sure if this shape is still too intense. You know what I'm gonna do here? This thing needs to soften up a little bit. I think I used too many edges, so I'm going to grab this edge loop and just delete it. And then I'm gonna grab this guy. Let's see if I can slide him around too. No, I don't like that. Cancel these edges out. That way I'm not getting any influence from that at all. There you go, just kind of, once again, don't grab that end piece. There we go. Now I got like that softer influence because that was a little bit too intense there. Okay. Next up. What is next? What is, what do I do next here? I think these guys are still too much here, so let's delete those and see where I can go from here. needs to like be cut out nice and 
nice and straight there. This shape needs to follow that shape pretty good. Let's do something like this, maybe. Here, let's do these guys. Let's bridge these guys together here. I think what I need to do is just snap these guys in place here. Oh. Florida rain again. Do something like this here, I would say. Something like that makes sense where we kind of lock like lock this guy to this guy and and just kind of readjust try to find that curve that's happening there you know if i do if i fill this hole here and we kind of uh snap this guy over here we can kind of start to see that cutout happening there so that's why i think i, I think that that needs to happen with this guy um, let's grab our vertice here, snap them in place there, and let's, let's just try to like tug them out a little bit. These guys may need to slide around if you want to do some extra stuff. You know what? Let let me. I'm gonna put an edge loop here. Let's do a holding edge loop, like a one that's actually respecting the edge flow here. Slide this guy around. There we go. Something like that. snap you to you and then pull you out again now this way I'm just kind of bridging the gap between these guys now filling the holes this is not an easy shape Snap you in place there. So for everyone, you know, watching this, you know, this is how easy a gun is to make. <laughs> Ta -da. Okay. And, uh... I feel like this guy is probably also going to go for that journey. Just snap you on place there. Try to build up that transition, kind of. You know, maybe we'll do something a little bit like this there. Now, these guys haven't been snapped in place yet, so. Merge you, merge, make sure I'm not grabbing too much here, merge, and uh, in situations like this, you have to tell Maya and Substance Painter like how you want to triangulate some of this kind of stuff here because that's a nasty looking edge and face that you may want to be a little bit clearer on it's like I, I want you to triangulate this way um, take the shape off here now yeah I mean that's I wish this was cleaner though, in all honesty, I think, 
I think this part up here on the top, it's, it's going to be really hard to get that shape in there. Oh, I want to grab this whole object here and just soften the edges up to see what it looks like there, because, yeah, that's not... Try something here. I want to try something. Let's uh. Just want to delete this edge. You're making me angry, Edge. I delete you. I feel like I need to put some kind of a lip on this thing. Um, let me try something. Let's, uh... Kind of put a little bit of this thing on here. Kind of, I, like, I want to hold that shape. So we're just gonna, I'm gonna try to force it to happen there. Let's see if this doesn't change things a little bit. Also, once again, I don't have a Lambert on this middle shape there, so you'll also see that my materials are freaking out right now, because I have too many of them. I'm just going to draw this thing on, and I'll snap some of these guys in place here. Send you over here. keep forgetting that I'm... Grab the object, please. Oh my goodness. What are you trying to do? I just want to make everything a blend. Can you blend me out, please? Okay, we're getting closer. We got that crisp edge going on there. And that's the kind of stuff we have to support. Um... We need that kind of topology coming through. So I'm going to delete stuff like this and try to make sure that that thing continues onwards. Just send another edge loop up here and kind of tell that triangle to go that way instead. Um, we could do another, whole, we can do a holding edge on the inside of this thing. I'm not sure how much that's going to support itself there. Actually, no, let's just do this. Send that edge loop around here. In all honesty, we need, this thing needs some kind of bevel. Because I think that is really going to help with, with these softened edges here. Let's create a little bit of a bevel there. Did you forget something, Bevel? What the heck are you doing? Uh, some of these vertices are still not attached together. That's probably why. There we go. I think that's that. Try you again. Bevel that shape up. That's nasty. Let's not select the end pieces here. Those junctions are pretty gross looking. I'd rather triangulate those organically. Excellent. 
All right, so. Let's just take this face and merge it to center. Grab this guy here. Make sure he goes all the way to the end. Delete that edge so I know where my bevel's going. Uh, this guy right here, send him over here. And then I can delete this edge. Doesn't make any sense. Okay, let's try soften again. Oh, it's looking much better. This negotiation is going smoothly. Oh, this guy, I wanted to collapse you. I remember that. Collapse the edge, because you don't make any sense. Hmm. Now, how do I want to... Well, I guess that fixed it, kind of. Now, I took this thing kind of straight, though. There is a little bit more of a curve happening there. So we can kind of work with that. We can kind of guesstimate this thing back to, to the original point again. Let's see if we can do like a small soft select, maybe. That's awful. Let's grab something over here, then. and make the select a little bit bigger. Uh, yeah. A lot of guesstimization happening here. It's like a freaking banana. <laughs> okay. It ain't gonna be fun, but there it is. What I think it, it is. Obviously in three mode, you're getting some mild pinching there. Uh, so, you know what? You probably need a holding edge up here to correct that. There we go. And, you know, may actually want to take an edge loop like this, delete it, and let this edge loop be kind of like another holding edge over here kind of thing. So you, we'll see here how you let that, like, let that edge influence this edge loop over here, and then you get that, like, gunmetal kind of impression there. There's something over here that I'm not liking at all. I think maybe if we need to come in a little bit over here. Like just something needs to be softer over here. There has to be some transitional element. It's gonna take a lot of work to get those pinches out of there. Once again. Grabbing these kind of holding edge guys over here. Letting it continue onwards and letting it kind of be that holding edge. No problem, no problem. <laughs> 